Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. Grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals. I go out and I go get it. Out of code, that's all I know. I don't succeed, then I don't breathe. Success, what does it mean? If I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream. Dig deep, go out and get it. Success Chronicles, compete until it's finished. Success Chronicles, go take care of your business. Success Chronicles, it's deeper than just winning. Success Chronicles. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. Today, we have Mr. Ben Anderson with us, uh, a great man that's doing lots to, uh, I don't know, to help people with their growth and technology and uh, doing some amazing things. And I'm so thankful to have him on this episode of the Success Chronicles. So thank you so much. Thank you, Chip. All right, well, let's dive into it. Talk to us about your life story. I know off air, well, we talked about some things and tracked your story a little bit, but if you don't mind sharing that with the audience and uh, and track your story till now. Sure, I'd love, love to. So I'm a New Zealander uh, who left New Zealand many years ago and traveled to London. Back in my day, when I when you first came out of college, it was all about leaving the islands. So if you think mm. about a uh, small island like New Zealand in the Pacific, uh, you know, I, I really had not got off that island to my early 20s. And we are very conditioned to come out of college and put the backpack on and head off and really launch our lives. And uh, I did and uh, took my backpack around Europe, uh, ran out of money and landed in London. Um, I'd had an early career in banking, then met a entrepreneur who said, hey, you know a little bit about banking. Why don't you get into the uh, recruitment world. So I did join him and had an opportunity to move into a startup company, which uh, really was quite defining for me in my life and loved it. So I joined that team and we built a credible company that um, I'm very proud of that's still public today. We took it public in 1996, mm -hmm. it became a broad based human capital business. Uh, and uh, then I went to a short course at Stanford back in 97 and fell in love with Silicon Valley. So I was London, Silicon Valley, all the way through, been very interested in this whole concept of unlocking potential and performance and creating the life that you, you want to lead. And I really look back now on reflection and see, you know, how much my, my dad played in that uh, piece as uh, you know these days when I think about it walking around our home as I was growing up there were little post-its everywhere of mm. little, little signs of self uh, affirmations and you know how he was going to be that day and I kind of think that that when I look back on it those days I was kind of thinking what's he up to but now I can see the power the power of that yeah. um, so uh, you know I uh, I ended up in Silicon Valley and about nine years ago, discovered a group called the Handel Group, which was headquartered at the time out of, out of New York. And I was looking for somewhere that, to take my, my coaching practice and the work that I was doing and discover the Handel Group. And their uniqueness was the method of coaching that they were teaching in many universities. Today, it's in over 42 universities. We teach a method of transformation Stanford, MIT, Yale, Princeton, Vienna, University in Europe, London, quite a number of amazing uh, colleges and schools where we are able to teach this method to support not only the pupils and the students, but also the educators and the administrators of those organizations to really think about their life differently and author the results they truly want to bring into the life. And I've discovered that Silicon Valley is just, I could not be in a better place for transformation in many, many ways. I'm a you know, a short run from Stanford University. Uh, and this has been a, just from a career perspective, uh, I feel very fortunate to be able to be here and also be able to support my country back in New Zealand in many, many ways in terms of supporting the That's awesome. That's good stuff. Uh, you said the the magic T word, transformation. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's great when we can uh, live a life where we go through and experience some things and, and be able to reflect on and look back on, you know, how and why, you know, our how and why to get to where we are in our life. And and then I think it, it's really neat when we can do that, but then it's, it takes it to another step when we can take the things that we've learned and help others transform their lives. Yeah. And that's, you know, when I think about, you know, I get asked a lot about you know, the big question, why and purpose and mm-hmm. how do you find your purpose? How do you find your why? And I've really discovered that it, it, it really does emerge from the inside out. Yes. And, you know, as I do more and more work with senior people, as I become more senior in my community, uh, this whole uh, area of giving back and mentoring and coaching and supporting and really seeing people transform. You know, I often think yeah. about the work we do with athletes and with actors and musicians and that particular community really does have to constantly transform themselves, the next curve, the next move. Uh, and, you know, it's insp- inspiring how they do that, and they do it by a, by a choice to transform versus some sort of trauma or some sort of time that or incident that happens to us where we see people. I do see you know many people that come to see us to look at changing their lives when they've got divorced, there's been an illness, they've got a child that's had a, a major issue, there's an addiction, uh, though that list of things go on, and it seems to give us all a fright and give these people a bit of a, Oh, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we think a lot about, wouldn't it be great to get that step up change and that transformation without needing that horrible trauma incident to knock us into shape. So we think a lot here about deliberate change and deliberately looking at the lives that we can go create. And, you know, I think it's, um, you know, there is uh, a lot every one of us can do in our lives to, to author and create the world that, so, you know, we really want to live in. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. I love it. Well, what are three things you accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Well, I got, you know, I got to say that you did tip me off, Chip, that I, these are, some of these questions are coming and I thought about this and I, you know, the number one thing for me has become having a family. Mm-hmm. Um, as an achievement. It's been the hardest thing I think I've ever done in my life um, <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, just learning about me. Uh, yeah. Both my kids have my traits and my wife Victoria's traits. So they're often showing the mirror up and we learn so much about ourselves. And, you know, I've, I've changed a lot because of my children and I, I think now that we all dent the kids and, you know, I was dented by mine, but, you know, you, you know, there's no book on how to really be a, be a parent, but that would be the number one for me that I think will continue to be a marvelous journey. That's just getting richer and richer and deeper and deeper, uh, you know, with my, you know, with my, my children. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that creating a career where it really is about, unlocking potential and for a guy that started out at uh, college in finance and accounting and tax and law when i think back at it now i think goodness you know how did i end up in this world of uh, transformation and leadership development Mm -hmm. you know when and it really it really came down to uh i think you know meeting some really interesting people on the way uh so there, there is somewhat uh luck in terms of the people you meet, but also understanding that when you meet people and you feel that connection and they're beginning to show you a potential new way, I think being prepared to, to go with that and trust yourself is a big one for me. I also think about what I'm, my ability to change actually has become a real strength for me. And I'm really pleased with the way that I I now, you know, take on change. I take on challenges. I take on this desire to constantly look at how I can, you know, create the most positive learning. I don't always mean these are all fun experiences because some of them are uh, super challenging, but really taking that work on and seeing life as a mastery 
process rather than a, I'm going to get it now and accepting that and understanding that it's going to be a lifelong process for me. So it's a practice just like yoga, meditation, going for my morning run, whatever that might be. I really believe that coming to the conclusion that the journey's the most important thing and being present is a real, very tough thing for me having been a very ambitious kid getting off an island and wanting to go make things happen to just understanding that I, you know, I can get so much by just being present in this conversation with you, for example, Chip. That's it. And really uh, your presence is the present. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's all we know. You know, like it's so interesting when we think about, cause we work with very, very high performing sports teams, very high performing individuals and that's really what they, they focus on is how to be so present. And, yes. and the more present we can be and bring our true selves to that field, to that court right now, opens up the possibilities for more potential. And, you know, what we're learning, you know, one of the things I, you know, I'm fascinated. I, I went to see a guy called Dan Siegel, a psychologist out of L.A. talk recently about this whole plane of probability and how we really, you know, this is a scientist who's really beginning to see the rather woo-woo stuff that's going on and how important it is for us to create these planes of possibility, which are, you know, instead of operating off a cone or almost a sort of a, a cylinder, we begin to widen and open up the plane by being more present. And that takes work. And one of the things we think a lot about in our coaching is that inner dialogue, that boss, we, you know, Chip, you've got one in your head, I have one in mine, and they are yelling at us all the time. And yes. that's one of the fastest ways we've discovered to getting change is by understanding who's that agent inside our heads. You know, what are they saying? Because they're normally saying things that really aren't conducive to, to, to our success. You know, they're often fearful. They're often being somewhat of a brat. They're kind of being moody. The patterns that we pick up from early earlier in our lives. And so, you know, as you work with these psychologists, they, they talk a lot about cleaning, uh, you know, cleaning that out, you know, quietening that chatter and really creating a bigger plane for us just to increase the probability that we're going to get what we want in our relationships. Okay. Uh... Ben Anderson, you speak in my language. <laughs> you know, I uh, it was so hard for me not to, uh, as you were going through, give you sound effects like "ooh" or "wow." <laughs> you know, I'm sure it showed on my face, but uh, yeah. but like that's amazing stuff. And I think you know, being a former athlete and a, and a coach as well. Yeah, one of, one of the things that I um, I visited Stanford uh, University. Um, a week ago, two weeks ago, actually, a week and a half ago, we had our police commissioner from New Zealand, uh, who was, for some of you will remember, Chip, we had a, a terrible massacre earlier on this year and a shooting in New Zealand, and he was uh, you know, out front of that. And he really has been on a mission to create the most compassionate police service in the world. And he wanted to come to Silicon Valley to meet with the Research Center into Compassion at Stanford. And really, he's on this mission now of taking compassion to a country level because we're learning that there is so much, so much good in, the, in, in compassion from a biological. It, it serves you and I so well. When we're compassionate, there are such health benefits, there's such great power and what it does to us and our families and our countries. And we met uh, the, one of the, the vice dean, actually, of the business school at Stanford, a guy called Brian Lowry. And he was telling us that at the business school, which is known, the Stanford GSB is known for psychology. And he really does believe that the business, business is all about, you know, fundamentally the way we do relationships. And it's very, very important. And they have the, the most successful class, they, or the most popular class they have at Stanford Business School is called Touchy Feely. <laughs> that's, that's the nickname, which is the emotional. And you know, much, in fact, my colleagues have regularly put at Stanford uh, in this, uh, you know, this, this work around learning about who you are and authoring your life and understanding your 
you know, your your patterns and how you begin to you know bring the best self to to the work. But it was very interesting when he talked about relationships and how everything starts as you as you would have found as a an athlete and as a you know teacher and as a coach. You know that it, it's all about how we relate to each other. Yes. Um, and uh, what we're learning more and more is this: you know, how you relate to yourself is actually yes. you know the first thing. And so, so much of our work now is we really go phase one on understanding you know your, yourself and designing your own life. That's good stuff. Well, uh, let's, let's hit on success. What is your definition of success? Again, it's uh, it, it's changed um, for me right now. It's it's more about being as authentic as I can and bringing my real self uh, into every interaction. Uh, really, being very accurate, you know, in my thinking about what's really going on here. How do I make a contribution? So, you know, I think of it in terms of that being present, being in integrity with what I'm really thinking and saying. I think a lot about that. Uh, my training as a coach was deep in that world of keeping promises to myself, because if I don't keep promises to myself, it's very hard for me to, to, to coach others and support others to, you know, to, to be great. I think that um, making an, imp you know, an impact with my community, both here at home, family, uh, my team outside the doors here, uh, being a contributor to their lives is really important, uh, become very, very important to me. And, uh, you know, I think, I think, you know, remaining mentally and physically and emotionally and spiritually healthy is really, you know, the foundation for doing what I do. You know, I've learned more and more the importance of to be successful. I've got to be really healthy in every way um and that is something i think a lot about now more than i did uh in the past you know i no longer burn the candle at both ends i i think about meetings that are coming up i think about family events i think about who i want to be each day my co my coaching community at the handel group uh we we all design our days every morning we really do write out our days uh, and we define, we like to, 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 as we do our practice in the morning, we like to write out what our days are going to be like, who we're going to be. And it's incredible, Chip, how we often manifest exactly what we declare and put out to the world. So, you know, those are the things that I, you know, when I've done that, when I, you know, can feel very complete at the end of the day. And it's not easy uh, when I can feel completed that way. I tend to feel I've had a, you know, successful day. And, um, and I, you know, I feel, you know, that it's, it's the condition of my life's good to set me up for the next day. Mm -hmm. Man, that is some great stuff. Well, if you don't mind sharing with the audience where they can go follow you and check you guys out and uh, show you some support with what you guys have going on. Yeah, we often get asked about how we can, uh, you know, how you know how people can get access to what we do. Um, so we're at hand, handelgroup.com. Chip, you'll probably put that in your your show notes. Yes, sir. Handelgroup.com, and we sixty five people. We're global now, and we four divisions. We've got, as I mentioned, we've got an education, we've got a life coaching, and we've got business and we've got a sport entertainment division and what we would love people to, to do is start you know experiencing our program we've got a terrific program that is available to everybody online and it really is around designing your life we look at 12 areas of somebody's life and that's what we believe you know we've all got in terms of our makeup and how we become you know, full of integrity if we look at all our areas of life and you know that's available it's a uh, not expensive and um you know they can put your code in the, into the uh into the little coupon box and they get a nice discount so but it's very good you know i've had my family i've had my parents in new zealand using the platform i've got my kids on the platform mm. uh and then obviously and there are a monthly 
call in that you can you know, work with a, a live coach. And then we've got a variety of other coaching options. But if you go to thehandelgroup.com, you'll read some great material. Our founding team do some terrific blogs and um, they do some great articles on designing your life and dealing with the stuff that uh, can get in the way from us having super lives. Well, there it is. Again, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to interview with the Success Chronicles. Uh, thanks for what you do, you and your, your company, what you guys do. I think it's amazing work and, you know, the magic T word, transformations, bringing about transformations in the world. And I think we can't get enough positivity in our world to do that. Well, thank you, Chip. Thank you for what you do. It's terrific. And uh, we feel, I feel your energy and your yes, love. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, again, thank you. And thank you guys for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Go get it.